Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Song Han. I'm going to describe our research on accelerating large language model and generative AI. I joined MIT in 2018, so I've been working on efficient deep learning computing. So the problem is that the neural networks and AI models are pretty large, and uh, we have limited compute capacity in the chip. So how to put AI in the chip, how to put a big elephant in the refrigerator. I usually uh, use this analogy to talk about my research. Uh, so one way is to make the elephant smaller, right? To shrink the workload, shrink the AI models. Different from other uh, workload like SPAC, to the, uh, SPAC uh, benchmarks, the particular interesting part of neural network workload is that uh, you can gr aggressively change the algorithm but still maintain the the same accuracy or sometimes even better accuracy by less overfeeding, but it can drastically make it smaller and also make it more hardware friendly. At, at, at the same time, another way is to increase the, uh, the refrigerator to build more powerful chips by exploiting some of the features like sparsity and low precision. So some of my work has had a real uh, commercial impact, including two startup companies. One is focusing on how to big, uh, build better uh, chips. The other is focusing on how to shrink the AI models. So software is very important in uh, advanced technology node, uh, especially you see after five nanometer, uh, the percentage of the software cost in the chip design is getting pretty huge. And in the context of AI, um, uh, these AI models are growing much faster than the GPU memory. So in green is showing the uh, GPU memory over the years. Uh, the red line is showing the model size, uh, which is growing much faster compared with uh, the Moore's law. Uh, so there is a bigger gap between the supply of AI computing versus the demand of AI computing. Just give you an example. Uh, this is the GPU cluster we have in my in my lab. It's more than 200 GPUs. Uh, recently, I got two, uh, I got a couple of more, but it's very uh, compute intensive and. Uh, electricity consuming, such a big cable can sustain only two A100 two servers and only one uh, H100 servers, which is 10 kilowatts. So eight such server a donation will easily cost 100 kilowatts. So how do we solve the environmental issue and reduce the power of modern AI computing? Previously, I proposed a series of work uh, started this area by the deep compression work to prune and quantize neural nets to shrink the model size, uh, which is getting a lot of attention in recent years. So the publications on pruning and sparsity is growing exponentially in recent years, uh, both in the algorithms and systems uh, community, showing that there's a huge room by nudging the algorithm, by changing what we run on the, uh, on the AI chip even before um, designing the chip. And then to accommodate for the uh, pruning and sparsity, I designed this uh, efficient inference engine, which is now the top five most cited papers in the 50 years of ISCA. ISCA is a flagship conference on computer architecture. By starting this uh, area of research on bringing sparsity and compression to neural network accelerators. So in the 2023 is a big year, it's a new year, it's a golden age for generative AI. So we not only want to classify things, uh, but also we want to uh, generate uh, new contents. So that is posing new challenge for efficient AI computing, which will be the focus of today's talk. The LLM serving cost is extremely high, and ChatGPT is usually at capacity, uh, preventing upgrades, et cetera. So we want to reduce the serving cost uh, to release uh, those constraints. Uh, quantization is, uh, uh, has been there since I was doing my PhD, but there's new opportunity, a new challenge for quantizing large language models. From FP16 to int8, we can reduce the number of GPUs from, from five to three with the 80 gigabyte of GPU. Uh, so give a, big t a little bit of context. Quantization basically focus on how to map a floating point number into integers, into discrete values, and use fewer number of bits, say four or eight, rather than the floating point 16 versus 32 bit, which can save the memory footprint. Can we just apply those quantization techniques found in conventional vision models to large language models? We find this not, not quite easy. And there's a new challenge coming out where 
there is a lot of outliers in the activation of large language models, like in channel 500, channel 2000, channel 5000, they have big, very big, uh, uh, big spikes in large language models. If we use a uniform quantization for these large numbers, all these small values will be dwarfed to zero. So you are not exploiting uh, the quantization buckets very well. Well, the weight is pretty flat and easy to quantize. And how do we do with this? So using a very simple uh, heuristic where 0 0.1 uh, minus 10 equal to one by one, right? So uh, matrix multiplication is linear. One times 100 equal to 10 by 10, right? So you can flatten that, you can smooth those outliers by channel-wise multiplying that with a scaling factor. Like here, we multiply with 0 0.1, and on the weight, we multiply with 10. So the activation will become much easier to quantize. Weight becomes slightly harder to quantize. You see some pretty small, uh, very little spikes, but it's still relatively easy to quantize compared with this. Okay, so this leads to no runtime overhead. Everything can be done at compile time in this mathematically equal translation. And this also doesn't require any fine tuning, which is very expensive for large language models. So here is an example. Um, this is activation multiplied with the weight. We have two outlier channels here and here. And we can scale that in the mathematically equal manner, like 16 times one equal to four by four. Okay, so we use this scaling factor of four to scale the weight and activations accordingly, shrinking down the weight and, shrink, uh, and, uh, and bumping up the weights. So the result is mathematically equal and you no, no longer have these big outlier channels. So that very well maintains the accuracy uh, for uh, parameters up to like 175 billion parameter model and can reduce the serving cost of this 175 billion parameter model from eight GPUs to four GPUs. And the latency is even shorter since you re reduced a lot of communication overhead and the memory consumption is reduced by half. We also collaborated with NVIDIA pushing this to 530 billion parameters. Uh, used to require 16 GPUs to serve, uh, which is two DGX boxes. Each box is 300K dollar. And now we can reduce it by half to only two nodes, uh, to only eight, eight GPUs and one node, and the latency is very well maintained. So this is the 8-bit quantization, very successful, and then we want, can we do better, right? Apart from the cloud, can we run these large language models locally on our laptops, right? So we 3D printed this tiny chat computer uh, based on Jason Orin, uh, Jason Orin Nano. We can see them in the back and we can ask it several questions like telling us some attractions in Boston. It's gonna tell us Museum of Fine Art, Harvard Square, et cetera. And then in the back, you can see actually it's powered by a very small device, Jason Orin Nano in the back. So such kind of lightweight chatbot on the edge is very helpful. Can run in co-pilot services like code completion, office, game chat locally on the laptops, in your car, on the robots and more. We even talk about robotics. And we wanna enable such intelligence on these edge devices. But these devices are resource constrained and low power, which is actually several order of magnitude more challenging than vision models. Like our tiny ML projects, we were referring to project uh, model, model size less than one megabyte but this is seven billion parameters. In FP16, that's 14 gigabyte. That's several orders of magnitude of different uh, in the capacity, okay? So how do we deal with that? Eight bit is not enough. So we wanna further push it to four bit, but pushing it to four bit is very challenging. We initially tried, can we use a little bit of floating point uh, and push all the remaining weights to four bit? And actually we find it's possible. Only 0.1% uh, of the salient weight, if you keep them in FP16, you can safely quantize all the remaining parameters to only four bit. So you can see the degradation of the accuracy, uh, perplexity is, real, uh, is fixed. But our goal is everything in int four, so it can easily be processed by hardware, right? So 
uh, can we remove even those 0.1% in FP uh, floating point? And actually we find if we look at the activations, if you have large activations and you preserve those corresponding weight, that can preserve the accuracy. And how do we preserve the weight? We found a very simple heuristic. Rather than using FP16, we can bump up the value of this channel by a factor larger than one and shrink down the corresponding activation value that can equally serve the same purpose of introducing FP16. So this row is no longer FP16, but bump up, bumped up by two times. Okay? So why can that serve as the purpose? So if you see the mathematical equation, um, this is the rounding error, which is equal to uh, the uh, rounding error here, which is constant. It ranges from zero, 0 to 0 0.5 with an average of zero, uh, alpha quarter. And then if you have a scaling factor larger than one, um, this term will be uh, smaller. So the overall error will be smaller. So in that way, we can use this full bit inference and deploy it on a laptop through this open source project called TinyChat. You can uh, download it and run it on your uh, MacBook or Windows laptop uh, very fast, or even writing the code. And we, uh, computers are byte aligned, so how do we deal with uh, these four bit values? We do need uh, this kind of uh, register level uh, parallelism. And we also have that in part of the 6191 uh, course project, which is pretty fun. And similarly, we can observe the speed up uh, before and after this four bit quantization um, from uh, 50 tokens per second to 163 tokens per second, reducing the serv serving cost by three times by exploiting this four bit weight and 16 bit activation. Actually, such weight-only quantization has been proposed back in the EIE days, but not until recently where these FC layers are getting super popular and other layers in large language model are FC layers. And the weight is the memory bottleneck, not the activation. So this four-bit weight, uh, weight quantization, not quantizing the activation, very well preserve the accuracy and solve the memory bottleneck. So not only on the language itself, recently we trained uh, in-house trained visual language model that can understand not only image but also not only language but also image. Like here, we can ask, what is the person in the center of the image doing? And he's uh, pushing a stroller. What is the traffic light? It's red. And also, if you are driving, can you honk? It says uh, you cannot honk. Uh, it's important to be patient and follow traffic rules. These are not trained in a training data set, but language model enable uh, such uh, common sense by reading uh, these uh, texts. So we learn more knowledge by reading books than in the driving school. So that's how language can help uh, with these visual tasks. We can even understand uh, multiple images using VILA, and, uh, v our uh, visual language model, and also tiny chat to run it locally. On a, uh, this is running on the 4090 GPU. We can ask it, give it three uh, uh, example images and ask it when, um, for lunch I had a sandwich. Um, uh, so uh, what did I have for lunch and what time was it? It says for lunch I had a sandwich. Uh, since it says here is 12 p.m. You no know, lunch is really at noon. Similarly, we can do uh, in-context learning. We don't even need to describe the task, but we can just uh, train the model by interleave the image text so that we can give image one, Titan is famous for search engine, image two, famous for iPhone and Mac, and give it a third image. Without Titan the task, it automatically says it's famous for GPUs. So this is the magic for in-context learning. We even deployed it on a edge device, JSON Ori. So we asked it how many cars are jacked up. This is using uh, the smart factory scenario. I can tell uh, there are two cars jacked up in the image. And what color is his glove? The orange is orange. And what a brand is the car? It's a Jeep. So such, I call it computer vision 2.0, where you can have this zero shot and few shot learning capability uh, for something you have never seen, the training data. Uh, you can easily tell it by the knowledge you learn from language and putting them together. It's very challenging from compute perspective. 
but uh, Tiny Chat Engine really bridged this gap, uh, even ran this visual language model on a laptop, like telling you this is the, what is the, what is the name of the painting is Mona Lisa. And who drew it is Leonardo da Vinci. Similar for this driving case, we can also do, run it locally on a laptop using this register level parallelism and quantization uh, and four bit quantization. And uh, this line of work has drew a lot of attention in industry and academia. Um, NVIDIA Tensor RT LM is using AWQ as the default method of running four bit uh, language model on the GPUs. And as a result, we can fit this 180 gigabyte parameter model into the latest H200 GPU, which has about 140 uh, gigabytes, which previously cannot fit. And also adopted by uh, Intel Neural Compressor and also Berkeley's uh, uh, VLLM project, which is pretty interesting project, borrowing the virtual memory from an operating system into a large language model and also being used by Berkeley's fast chat, MEM Granite, where, which we are collaborating to convert this, their Cobra language into Java. Cobra is a very old language used in banks and governments lacks this maintenance, but we want to automatically translate them into Java and make it fast, and also a lot of startups and open source repos. So now we want to solve a new issue. We want to continuously interact with a chatbot using infinite or fixed an amount, of, uh, amount of memory. We call it the streaming LLM uh, to enable such long conversations in uh, non-stop streaming applications. Like when you are driving a car, you wanna constantly talk to it. Uh, when you are uh, reading a book, you wanna uh, read a long book, you can remember a lot of context. So without streaming LLM, the model collapses and conversation, when the conversation gets long, then it runs out of memory. But when th with streaming LLM, we can enable such non-stop conversations. So let's see how that works. So the baseline model is using the dense attention. So each token generated is attending to all the past tokens. Like the new red token has to attend to all the past tokens. So the, the KV cache has to grow linearly with, um, with the size of the conversation and perplexity is limited by the training context length. If you have trained on only 4K tokens, you can now go beyond that at inference time. What if we use a linear, or we use a constant windowed attention? So each new generated token only attend to a window of the past tokens. So that solves the memory issue, but doesn't solve the uh, perplexity issue. As soon as the first token gets evicted from the KV cache, um, the perplexity suddenly uh, explode. So we find a very simple yet effective solution is to preserve those attention sync tokens. Attention sync, actually the first token. We should preserve them, always pin them in the KV cache, not evict them from the KV cache to maintain the accuracy. And let's see how that works. And what is the attention sync? Uh, we found this issue three years ago, back in HPCA 21, in our Spaten paper, where we try to do this sparse attention by removing those redundant tokens. Like this sentence, he is a very famous researcher in the computer architecture area and has published many, uh, the generated token is called papers, and papers heavily attend to publish, has a researcher. Uh, but not attend to area, comma, in. That makes sense. But why it very uh, heavily attend to the first token, like he, across many layers? And we found a similar observation, trying to prune this sentence, the tokens in this sentence. Du Fu was a great point of the Tang dynasty, etc. They can prune Fu, but not Du. Why is that? Du is the first token. Even for modern large language model like Llama, we also observed many uh, layers just heavily attend to the first token, very weird. And we call that token attention sync. And the reason is that the softmax function has to make sure all the attention values has to sum up to one, sum up to one for all the contextual tokens, even if they are not rev relevant, like do for like do but we need to dump it somewhere, to dump those values somewhere, and that is the attention sync. And why attention sync is the first token? Because that's 
the first token generated, which is globally available, visible to all other tokens. Uh, wh what should we do with the attention sync? We want to always pin them in the KB cache, just like this. We find actually the first four tokens need to be pinned in the KB cache, and then you can use a sliding window as the conversation gets longer and longer. And as a result, rather than the perplexity explode, perplex perplexity can remain the same. This is very interesting where a lot of large language model concepts come from computer architecture, like the KV cache or speculative decoding like speculation, uh, like the uh, VLM, vir uh, borrowing the idea from the uh, page table and the virtual memory. And this project, uh, the number of GitHub stars is growing super fast in the recent month. And it's available on the NVIDIA Tensor RT LOM. Um, and also, uh, MLC chat integrated uh, streaming LOM in their app so you can chat nonstop on your iPhone. Uh, it enable very long conversation locally on your iPhone uh, in a nonstop manner. And a very drastic imp uh, reduction of latency compared to just getting rid of the KV cache. And recently, we've been also working on another project trying to extend the context length. Previously, it's 4K, which is roughly a short academic paper size, but we want to have the large language model to understand much longer papers, like a computer architecture paper is much longer than 4K tokens, right? Not to mention those legal documents. So we are able to extend the context length from 4K to 32K using only one uh, GPU node um, by using this technique called long LoRa, which is to appear as clear as oral paper. Um, the idea is to reduce the memory by using this uh, shifted sparse attention, okay? Otherwise, it's all N square compute complexity for if you need a dense attention, okay? But we can just use this local attention, each one attend themselves locally, but to, exchange, to encourage information exchange, we shifted uh, for half of the, uh, the, the has, okay? So it'll be in this manner, from one to f 10, 10 to 20, versus five to 15, so they are interleaved, and as a result, you can see all the tokens. And the perplexity is drastically reduced, and the memory is the smallest compared with, to, with the baseline methods. So not only on language, but also on image generation, we spend a lot of, a lot of efforts on that uh, to accelerate diffusion models. You wanna draw a picture and you wanna generate the edited picture. But sometimes the edited part is not the whole image, but why, not, why using the compute to regenerate the whole image? Okay, so well, by exploiting the spatial sparsity to only uh, compute on the edited, edited region, we can reduce the compute by eight times and reduce the latency by seven times, for example, adding the sun. Uh, the idea is that we only uh, extract those edited parts, okay, though we call it active indices, and uh, for the edited image, we only compute, um, we do a gather operation to gather those edited patches and pass it through the convolution and then scatter it to the locations it belong to after, after that. So the convolutions workload is drastically reduced since we are only working on those edited regions, like here adding a cloud to this image. So uh, for example, in this image, a photograph of a horse on a grassland, and this is the area we wanna edit. Uh, it's called in-painting, painting something new in the image. Originally, um, it had a horse, but it's taking uh, 1.8, uh, 1,800 gigamax, but using our technique, using only uh, 500 gigamax, we can uh, observe the similar result. Similar for this one, a fantasy beach landscape trending on art station. We add a coconut tree, so the generated image also has a, a coconut tree very comparable to the baseline, but since we are only editing a smaller region, which is actually very practical, uh, a draw, an artist may, may draw, draw on top of a, a picture a small region, so it's saving uh, five x. And certainly, the larger you draw, you draw the smaller the saving, and the smaller you draw, the larger the saving. Uh, for the next project, we also enable this subject-driven image generation, like Song Han riding a horse, but the generated image doesn't look like me. 
right? So we want to enable this customization capability. So traditional methods to enable customization need extra fine tuning to actual fine tune, for example, fine tune on top of my images. But we know fine tuning is very computationally expensive. And it generates very poor multi-subject images, like here, Einstein, Newton, sitting in the park. Both of them look like Einstein, not Newton. And they tend to overfit those reference images, not the uh, action. For example, Fei Fei riding a horse, it looks like Fei Fei, but no horse. With our method, we can make it look like riding a horse. And here, to skip some of the methods, here is our result. No fine tuning is needed, only inference, um, but look like the subject a lot, more for multi-subject generation. And we in even enable Jensen and Lady Gaga sing, sing together with this online demo. Feel free to check it out. Okay, so uh, for the limit of time, I'm gonna show uh, some other work on learning on the edge, not only run inference, but also be able to customize your model to auto automatically, continuously adapt to new data collected from the sensors. That is very challenging, since fine tuning and training is expensive, and we exploit quantization work scaling to use low precision for training, and also sparse update to use only uh, a portion of update, and followed by this tiny engine, we can reduce the training memory by a large margin and deploy it on a microcontroller. MIT News covered our recent work, pushing this beyond uh, vision models to large language models to fine tune LAMA2 on a JSON ORI. And the key idea is by using this sparse tensor and sparse layer back propagation. I appeared on Micro uh, in Toronto last year, which is saying that not all the layers are equal. You can find those important ones and do uh, such back propagation the auto diff at the compile time and push as little as much to the compile time rather than at the runtime. So we can fit uh, this, twin, uh, this fine tuning of Lama 2 7B on a JSON ORI, reduce the latency from seven to less than one second. And here, given the input, please re reverse the words in the sentence, I love the micro conference. And Lama 2 7B original says, I hate the conference micro but actually we want it to reverse the words, not the sentiment. And the tuned model can correctly say it. Uh, conference micro the love I is actually reversing um, the content. Okay, so such technique can enable AI on the edge devices to keep learning uh, over time with limited compute. All right, so to disseminate this line of research, I opened and developed a new course called Efficient ML.AI in the intersection between system and algorithms uh, from inference to training and all the way to application specific optimizations, particularly on large language model and AIGC models. It has 200K views on YouTube, lots of registrations. Everything is available on the uh, website. Feel free to check it out. And finally, many thanks to my uh, students and collaborators and sponsors. I'm glad to take questions. Thank you. About streaming LLM, so does the limited length of dialogue depend on the time or the number of words? Sorry? Uh, about the streaming LLM, so does the limited length of a dialogue depends on the time or the, or the number of words. The training, uh, uh, the training window, like how, what is the corpus, the size of the contact size this model was trained is one limiting factor of how large contacts you can, uh, you can handle. And the second is the memory, how much memory you can store those KV cache. Each token in Lama 27B require half a million half a megabyte to store, so you can easily calculate how much that can fit in the GPU memory if you have like 12 gigabyte or 12, 24 gigabyte. So uh, if I'm a user, so I want to have a dialogue with the streaming LLM, so I want to know the maximum time that I could talk to them. Oh, we tried up to 4 million tokens. Oh. That's a lot. Currently the SOTA is 4K. Uh, the Llama 2 is, Llama 2 7B is 4K. We tried to 4 million, three orders of magnitude more. Still not fail yet. Yeah.
Uh, hi. Um, I, I'm wondering about the distilling of the models into like uh, int4 um, values. And I'm wondering if, so the models are like trained on F16, and then you're taking those and distilling into uh, lower bit representations. Um, but is there any advantage to trying to train the models natively on those uh, lower bit representations instead of distilling the higher? Yes, at Amidia, we've been pushing forward 8-bit training called FP8 using 8-bit floating point to train this model. It is having very, very promising result and develop this thing called transformer, transformer engine. So you can check it out. And that is cap available on the latest H100 GPU and H200 GPU. That's very promising. Cool, thank you. Yeah, very impressive. Uh, I'm just uh, trying to clarify on the tiny chat engine, uh, you demonstrated that it can have continuous um, yeah, interface. It doesn't run out of memory. But is it learning um, uh, on the fly as well? And how? What is the, what are the limitations in terms of the language, the overall uh, language model in terms of size? Mm. So here is not learning on the fly. This is just continuously doing inference. Inferencing. Mm -hmm. Yes, doing inferencing. Based but on the original la trained language model. Original trained language model. And we are just keep asking new questions. For example, this is a question, some coding question. And after a while, we can see that this is another coding function question. And we just keep asking questions to the oh, language model. OK, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you.